welcome to the, um, I think this is the fourth in Daba. Maybe it's mm -hmm. the fifth. It's the fourth. Okay. It's already yeah. losing track. But there's so much fun. Um, anyways, I am so glad to be here with Monica. And we have Till and Michael who are, they are the reason that printing works um, on our systems. <laughs> so this should be a very exciting um, and Daba. So my name's Heather. If you haven't seen me before, I, I kind of host these. I'm on the Abyss Do Desktop team. I do some lot, lots of different little things. Um, Monica is a, a, a community leader on the community team. And we have some exciting stuff to talk about at the end of the Andaba. So yes. make sure you stick around for that. Um, Mike Sweet is the original author of Cups. And Till is kind of the, the person that's helped um, get it on distributions by packaging it, providing, I think, like a, a GUI interface there to do setup and stuff. So they've been working on cups for 21 years. So it's old enough to drink out of a cup. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with that, yeah, I, I'd like to um, just kind of let Till and uh, Till introduce himself. Mike, you can introduce yourself. And, and uh, yeah, I did just so excited to have you guys here. Till, do you want to talk a little yes. bit about yourself? Yes, I'm. I I got the printing guru of of Linux, not only of of Ubuntu. As I was a system administrator, uh, uh, more or less twenty two years ago, I I read about Mike Sweet's cups in uh, in a magazine and put it into the network. Allowed, and this way, professors co could finally easily and and everyone in the department could finally easily print. I published a small a GUI, a first print dialog with options and uh, ever for Linux. So I'm a little bit also the father of print dialogs. I got invited by the author of the Linux magazine article to, to Linux Tag, a big Linux show in Europe. And Verman Driva uh, discovered me and they told me package uh, cups into our Mandrake Linux. And I did so, made it working, and all the other distros uh, were following suit. Also because I did a lot of infrastructure around it, like Fumatic and so on, so that every printer which worked before with LPD also worked with CUPS and packaged also Gutenprint, also a baby of Mike and... Uh, and other things and so it, it so the stone got rolling every distro with cups in 2001 i founded open printing in 2001 to 2006 i also did a lot of marketing as every year i organized a booth on the linux tag on this big european show where i got discovered by mandriva in 2000 and then in 2006, I started organizing annual printing summits, the first in Atlanta, where Mike and me announced the PDF workflow, and we, we do, did a lot of planning, and so printing got, uh, printing, uh, uh, got working better and better, and... So that's now, great. So you you discovered you found out that cups existed, and Mike, you wrote that. Like Mike, how did you get into printing? Did you just need to print something? You were like, I don't want to go to Windows. We'll, just well fix it's 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 kind of <laughs> like that. Yeah, uh, I actually I started a company. I was working for the Navy at the time and doing uh, flight simulator work and and flight training and all that and three D graphics and and boy, I was gonna take the world by storm. And so I, I went off and I wrote this 3D modeling program, kind of like a blender, but you know, far before that and that ever came out. And um, as part of that, I, I did this little uh, printing routine to be able to print out whatever you're creating so you can show it to people. And a friend of mine came over to me and, and I was showing him this stuff and he says, this is great, but you know, how many people are actually gonna use this? I mean, this was before 3D gaming on the PC and all that. and and it's like, well, you know, I, I can sell this to a whole lot of people in the military and stuff. Yeah, but, you know, I know I could I could sell people on this stuff that you did to print, you know, everywhere. And I said, oh, well, I'll think about it. And then, uh, you know, we we did some fiddling around and we, we put out a product to do printing. And 
within about three months, we realized that, you know, we're selling a whole lot more of this printing stuff than we are of, of this 3D stuff. And so we shifted directions and started doing printing. And, and as we went along, we were doing this for, uh, for commercial Unixes at the time. And we got to Linux and it's like, but all they have is LPRNG and, and, you know, we can't do print options. And, and so that kind of led me down to writing cups. And along the way, originally it was going to be based on LPD. And then I discovered everything that they're starting to do in the IETF for this new internet printing protocol. And I took one look at it and said, that's what we need to be doing. So I got involved in that and, and uh, CUPS became the first open source and generally available IPP implementation out there and uh, has just gone from there. And, um, you know, over the years I did uh, GIMP print, which then uh, Robert Krowitz took over and it's now called Guten print. Um, and, you know, I keep contributing back here and there to add a CUPS driver to it, or soon there'll be a printer application for it. Um, so things are happening on that side of, of, of things. And then I, I get contacted by uh, a lot of the commercial Unixes at the time. And then this, this company that's on hard times, Apple, uh, who is just trying to get their new operating system, OS 10, uh, off the ground. And they decided they wanted to use CUPS. And that kind of got the ball rolling um, to, to have, you know, a, a real commercial Unix and all these Linux distributions at that point, picking it up and it's just gone from there. And, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of funny, uh, anybody I've worked with in printing, we didn't start doing printing, but somehow we got there and, and, and it's really hard to leave. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's so like we all need it, right? So yeah. it's, I can see how you could get sucked in um, and provide such a necessary service for everybody. I'm curious, like when you said that you started selling the printing stuff more than the 3D modeling program, were you actually selling it and like making money yeah. off of it? And then you put yeah, yeah. like a open source license on it later? Well, yeah, see, the, the first version, uh, uh, my old company was called Easy Software Products of all, all things. And and we had ESP Print was the, the product. And you bought it and you could do it on SGI workstations, Silicon Graphics, uh, and Sun workstations, and later HP workstations. And and we sold to people who were using commercial Unix and, and you know, schools and, and government and whatnot. Um, and so, you know, we had... A, a, a pretty good uh, uh, living out of that. And then um, when we we heard about this new upstart operating system, you know, Linux and and how how it was going to really, you know, bring bring uh, Unix to the masses, I said, OK, yeah, we want to support that. But, you know, at that point, there was no real way for us to do what we did on the commercial Unixes because they used uh, the system five printing system, um, which uh, you know, we, we have both the System 5 and the Berkeley commands in, in CUPS, but uh, the System 5 system used uh, what they called interface scripts so that you could send options in to the print jobs to be able to control things. Whereas uh, with uh, Berkeley, it's you kind of send it and, and about all you could do is say, print this raw or, you know, treat this as enter off input or something like that. And so uh, when we wanted to support other Unix is, you know, Linux was one and there was a, a digital Unix, uh, you know, from Digital Equipment Corporation, which is no more, um, you know, they had theirs and, and uh, IBM had had their own thing they were going on with AIX. And so uh, it was, you know, we kind of realized, well, we can't do the printing stuff that we want to do unless, you know, we write a new printing system. And that's what led to CUPS and, and, um, we also had a commercial product called ESP Print Pro that was based on CUPS. So we had this like this split and the CUPS was always open source part, but then we sold the drivers and the support and everything for it um, as a commercial product. And, and that worked really well as long as there were people using commercial units. Um, but, you know, that, that dried up. Um, right. So. Well, 
those of us that don't use commercial Unix that just use like open source distros now, we really <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes, and, and everything which ESP point Paul uh, did commercial and closed source, I had to replace in free software. <clears throat> and the first thing before I was at Mandriva, I, 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 I saw the nice option print dialogue. So I, I, I created one myself <clears throat> in 10 days, announced it on, on fresh media and uh, this made me discovered and invited, discovered first to the Linux stack and on the Linux stack discovered to Mandrake. Right, but before you before you were kind of discovered, like you say, <clears throat> you were doing a PhD in physics and then you needed to yes. print stuff and then yes. you got sucked into printing and never yes, left. Yes, yes, it's <laughs> what, what, like with Richard Stallman, he got also, mm -hmm. he was also a system administrator and got right. sucked with printing. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. he, mm -hmm. he started the free software movement by that. Right. And right. I simply slipped into printing because printing did, did so work so badly. We had a nice color laser printer, which only worked with commercial Unixes because it came with some closed source commercial print dialogues and so on. And with the Linux, it, it was really a disaster. And well, I think we so can all agree I it's much nicer in the now. Linux magazine and right. solved this. And this way, every, uh, this way, my side departed and, uh, that's great. Then when I, when all the Linux di distros had taken over, probably this made uh, Mike more and more attractive to Apple, <laughs> where, the, where he then ended up. Yeah. Um, well, I think we should say that Mike's not at Apple anymore, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I <laughs> left uh, a year and a half ago now. Yeah. Yes. So before it's people start sending you at resumes, they gave me an Apple. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, okay, well, I think we've done some really awesome background. I, I think it's great how you guys both kind of tripped into this and but made it something amazing. Um, <laughs> so one thing I'd like to do is just I'll remind everybody that there's live chat in Ubuntu and Twitch where in Ubuntu, YouTube <laughs> where you can uh, submit your questions um, and we'll be collecting those and responding to them a little later. So, before we do that, um, Till and I have kind of worked together this week to put together a few diagrams to kind of show what the printing stack used to be like, what it is like, and where it's going. Um, so I'm going to go to that now. Um, oh, yes. It is here. There we go. Okay. So I know it's kind of small, and I do have these up on GitHub. Well, I have the SVG files on GitHub. Um, so this is what classic cups looked like before. You had a user, you had a printer, and the user had to interact with cups through some method, whether that's GNOME Control Center or the web interface of cups or LP admin or what have you. And then cups would initiate the queue and pull for uh, a, a PPD file, which is the um, printer description file. No, P postscript printer description. Postscript file. printer description file. Thank yes. you. And by the first word, you see that this is already absolutely abs obsolete. <laughs> right, right. So there was there's some rules here around like if your printer is postscript or if it's non postscript, and then if it's non postscript, then um, there's filters that kind of define. Um, for you know, it it it, it takes it generates the printer language um, and the filters input data format. So if you if you you know post oh gosh, PPD files were written by Adobe for PostScript printers, but then I think Mike took that idea and said, hey, well we should support non PostScript printers too, and yeah, use I, these filters uh, to kind of do that. Yeah, I I definitely appropriated them and. And said, "Okay, we're going to do this to make it all work together." And and uh, I used GoScript a lot to to, uh, to kind of bridge the gap there, so that we're still using PostScript commands. But the thingy was that in the good old Unix time, PostScript was was the standard print job format. 
print, print jobs were, were sent by the applications in PostScript to the printing system, to LPD or LPING. And then if the printer was not PostScript, a filter had to convert it. And the more, and in, and for this, you had GoScript, and therefore in GoScript, lots and lots and lots of drivers are built into GoScript to generate many different printer languages. And so when Mike started CUPS, this was still the case because the PDF workflow was only invented in 2006 by, by, by me and Mike, more or less. And so this way we had ghost script and now uh, i have and then i have used to get to get from lpd to cups to go on with ghost script i've used from another one the so-called site www.linuxprinting.org which does not exist anymore yet. now it was it, it is it is mer it got merged into open printing and there was a printer database with some uh, automated system which could generate uh, interface scripts for LPING and PPD files for CUPS and so on. And I have overtaken this project, completed the drivers and completed and, and, and added many printers to the list and use this so that every printer which worked with LPING works with CUPS and so that we could go on with, uh, that, that the distros adopt CUPS, accept CUPS, adopt CUPS. And so, you know, there was PostScript in the beginning and therefore we have the PostScript printer description files. Therefore, and Mike is probably, uh, come, has come to the idea of the PostScript printer description files. And as there are non postscript printers, he has added extensions. Right, Most right. And, and those PostScript description files also contain like all of the printer settings and anything that like a user could set, like, um, you know, the, the tray that they want to use, or, um, you know, if, if there's Color, an black and white resolution, yes, all, just all of the settings, right? It's, it's essentially the config file for like the printer. Um, so would you say this, this was the kind of picture of cups up until, up until driverless IPP printers came about? Is that true? Yes. Yeah. Yes. The the as as the PP as Mike has done the extension of the PPDs for non postscript printers, which is the most important cups filter line, which defines which filter is used to to in to turn input into the printer's language, and with the flexibility that the input does not need only be postscript, you can have a fil you can define a filter which takes PDF or cups raster as input. So we have. Left, continued with this mechanism and the PDF workflow, which Mike and me announced on my first printing summit in 2006, it was only done on the basis of the filters so that the filters were changed so that everything incoming was, uh, Mike has done a super, super flexible cups we, I did not need to change CUPS to introduce the PDF workflow. I only changed the filters and the definitions which filters to use. And so Very the cool. filters got changed so that the incoming data is, is turned into PDF when it's not PDF, and then PDF into the printer's language. So right. as, as job format is, is replaced by PDF. And I talked with all the GUI and uh, application people that their applications should produce PDF into PostScript and they switched over, they did it. And so we got the PDF workflow, but the mechanism okay. how cups and filters in cups work is completely the same. Right. So and also a PPD file without cups filter line is, is continues to be a PostScript PPD file so that we do not right. need to modify our ma manufacturer PPDs. Right. So if, if, a, if a PPD file doesn't have the filter, then it's just assumed that it's a PostScript printer. Yes. <clears throat> so, so that's what CUPS kind of was. Now, if we look at driverless IPP printing, where we kind of take away the driver and CUPS does this 
um, automatic detection of the printer and can ask for some um, uh, properties and create the PPD file. So now the user can, they can interface with CUPS if they need to, but they shouldn't have to. Whereas before you kind of needed to go set up a, a printer to create the print queue and, and, and what have you. Right, um, one, of the, one of the nice things with where it is right now is that we were able to basically provide a, uh, uh, an IPP everywhere, or IPP um, driver that um, it, right now we're creating a PPD file that is used with the classic CUPS filters, um, but you don't have to download any drivers or, or, or find, find a PPD file. It just goes out and queries the printer and creates the PPD file from it. So it's automatic. Um, and we just have to take the next step and get rid of those PPD files. Yeah, yes. yeah. The trick is that the printer tells all its properties on request, on the get printer attributes IPP request, all the properties which the, uh, the user or the client needed to be able to print on it. And the printer also is required to, to, uh, to, to uh, support one of four standard uh, languages, standard data formats, and also to tell in the get printer attributes request which of these uh, formats uh, it uh, supports. And this way, the client has all the information to print on the printer. And how the client does it, this is completely up to the client. C currently, CUPS simply uh, is oriented to its old functionality. So CUPS is uh, converting the answer to the uh, get printer attributes request into a PPD file. And CUPS filters the... the the set of, of filters for CUPS is containing filters to produce these four standard lang languages. And so there's everything that CUPS this way can print on a, uh, on a driverless printer. Right. And CUPS right. also, uh, while the daemon is running all the time, is listening to DNSSD, the exchange format for network devices the standard exchange system for network devices and discovering printers by that. And as soon as it discovers a printer, it does an internal registration that a printer is there. And so as soon as it has done this internal registration, not yet created a queue, it answers to clients with uh, applications, user applications like uh, LibreOffice or so. It answers to the request of the print dialog, which print printers are available. Also that this printer for which is, it has only done a pre-registration, but not really made a queue. It also answers that that printer is there. And as soon as the user in the print dialog selects a printer and if it's, for example, this driverless printer for which CUPS does not yet have created an actual queue, uh, it, the, the, the client gives a request, for example, for the settable options to, to CUPS so that the, the, uh, because the, dis, uh, the uh, dialog wants to display them. And then CUPS sees there's a request to this printer and then CUPS quickly creates a print queue, generates a PPD and everything so that the print queue ready for print is there, answers the request to the dialog so that the dialog, for example, can display the options. And then when the user and then the user prints the job through this queue. And even if the user prints with the LP, LP command simply a job without asking for the options before, simply to, to print with the defaults or using IPP standard standard options, then the queue is created on the on the request that uh, that uh, the user wants to print. Then the print job happens. And when the queue stays idle for one minute, CUPS removes it again to, to, to free the resources and uh, stays with the pre-registration. And uh, all, all the thing happens again when another request comes from any client. 
this is how PUBS works. The little problem of this mechanism is that many print dialogues, because the big inertia of GUI projects and not having much time to, to uh, uh, maintain all the parts of the big, uh, uh, G, uh, of the big uh, GUI project, they use sometimes two old APIs, and the old APIs show only the physical cues and not the not uh, the the pre only pre register register to drive others printers these virtual virtual cues. Um, okay, so therefore I... I had to wedge in cups cups browse the as a workaround, but I hope I can sooner or later get rid of that. Right. So I just want to um, pause you there and say this is kind of what driverless printing looks like today. This is great. And um, the future of printing, which is like the printing applications, will not um, include PPD files. So, I mean, the printer, the printer application will still like go out and generate it. But before we go to the final slide here, do you two, one of you, maybe want to talk about briefly why we want to get rid of PPD files? Well, uh, maybe I'll answer that one. So um, PPDs, the last time Adobe updated the po uh, PostScript printer description file format was, I think, in 1984. I have to double check oh, that, but it's been a few years. Um, Oof. <laughs> and um, so it was intended for PostScript printers. And, and uh, over the years, uh, We've all cursed at some of the limitations of it. We've been able to extend it in so many wonderful ways, but um, ultimately what it comes down to is um, back in the day, it was great to have this static file that described all your options, but modern printers don't have just one static configuration for their lifespan because you add memory to it, you put a tray in with a certain size paper, or all that information is reported dynamically. And so it's much nicer if, if you're trying to print something and, and you stick some photo paper in, in the multipurpose tray, you want to be able to just go and say, I want to print photos out of that multipurpose tray and have it, oh, yeah, it's four by six and the, so on and so forth. And the right things happen. You can't do that with PPDs. Um, so there's those limitations uh, as well as the mismatch in technology you know we're no longer using postscript as our our means of printing um but and string and password options yeah <laughs> there's there's a whole lot of, right. of 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 options that you might want to use that are Six easy numbers. to express in ipp but not so much on a ppd mm -hmm. um, but also from the standpoint of the software itself um if you have uh, a printer driver, say, that uh, was provided for 32-bit uh, Intel systems for a particular Linux distribution that may or may not work on another Linux distribution, um, certainly won't work on a lot of the 64-bit systems. And if you have a Raspberry Pi, well, you're out of luck. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> and, and we have, for many years, been trying to come up with a way to to uh, standardize that so that you could, you know, if you're going to be providing a, a binary printer driver, to provide it in a package format and a, you know and and linkage and everything so that it'll just work on any oh, Linux distribution. Of NSB. <laughs> yeah, so we had Linux standard base was no one attempt, <laughs> um, and now we have like the Snap Store and and uh, app images and and things of that nature. Um, but as soon as you start going to those containers, there's no way for you to connect it with, with CUPS because CUPS expects the drivers to live in a certain directory and the PPD files in a certain directory. And, and so it very quickly becomes this unmanageable problem if you stick with printer drivers. Mm. And then, uh, of course, over the last 20 plus years that I've been doing CUPS, I can't tell you the number of times I've had complaints from uh, people in the security field that you're running this third party code as in a privileged user uh, account and and it's not separated from anybody and oh my god the world's going to end if we keep doing this and 
<laughs> and knock on wood, we haven't had any any major security issues. We've had reports and stuff, and we fix them as quickly as we we get the reports. But um, I I'm sympathetic to that because you know I have a long history of of writing software that runs in mission critical environments, and and I don't want somebody to say, oh, we got a zero day in cups, and it caused the the disclosure of of 50 million people's a email addresses or something. It's like, no, I don't want, I don't want that, that kind of uh, legacy. Um, right. so, so one of the, the, the things there, if we can get past PPD files, which are holding us back in how nicely things work and these printer drivers, you know, how they're packaged and, and, and how you use them, if we can come up with a better way, um, then, you know, we solve all these problems all at once. And then, we have uh, like a well-defined path going forward to how, how to make this work now and in the future. And mm -hmm. so it's probably four years, maybe five years ago, I started um, talking about this idea of a printer application um, where we use IPP as the, the standard interface to it. So it's a network interface. Uh, we can completely isolate it as much as we want. Um, the printer applications within you know whatever uh, restrictions from the operating system can can do whatever they need to do, and if something happens, there's a security issue in it. Well, it's it's limited to that printer application. It doesn't affect the whole system. And you know, over the years uh, with uh, SE Linux and App Armor on on the Linux side of things, and and um, and sandboxing on, on Mac OS, we've been able to add restrictions so that um, printer drivers can't just do anything. But, you know, by having it as a separate process and perhaps even, you know, completely isolated from the main operating system, it's further insulated us from, you know, giving up credit cards or personal information or, you know, what have you. Uh, and so, uh, Every time I keep talking with people about this, it, it's like, oh, yeah, this is exactly what we need to do. And so uh, very quickly, the printer applications became the solution. Mm -hmm. And then if we have printer applications, then the uh, what we've had as our traditional CUPS D that's had to do all this uh, fancy filtering and support drivers and back ends and everything now becomes something much lighter weight. And certain problems that we've had historically from cups running as a system process if we can run it as a user process then all of a sudden things like if you're printing to uh, uh, another system where you have personal credentials you don't have to try to relay them from you know the user space to the to cups d or have cups d go back into user space to try to grab them now it can all be running in the user space and so we reduce code size, we simplify things, which is also great for security and performance. And, and then we gain all the, the new functionality so that when you pick a printer, it'll tell you, I've got these three paper sizes loaded, and then you can just pick what you want and it just works. So, you know, it's, it's really a, a dramatic improvement just by getting rid of PPDs. Well, but so, but the printer applications will still kind of emulate like a, a driverless IPP, right? And like come Correct. up with PPD files and stuff when it's needed. Well, so, so internally, you might like uh, for a PostScript printer in particular, like uh, Till's uh, PostScript printer application. Um, that's how you express your options, and and you can actually uh, the PPD files, the classic ones, allowed you to query the printer and say, what do you have loaded? And if the printer happened to support that, and many of the like the enterprise uh, PostScript printers did, then you could see, okay, yeah, this has got uh, A4 and A3 uh, loaded in it, and and uh, you know this is what's in each tray. Um, but at the same time, you'd also have the the cheaper PostScript printers uh, that may have one tray, and you may or may not get any answer from it. So uh, it the printer application does act as this bridge between, you know, the fully functional modern IPP and uh, these older legacy products and 
because it's an application, you can present user interface. So if if you see, oh, you just put new paper into the printer, you can tell it, yeah, I just put in A4, or I just put in, you know, four by six, or you know, what have you, and and that can then be reflected in the the print dialog when you go to print. Okay. And one thing also of the PBD spinning around, the peep, the 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 bridge, the connection between cups and the print application is a pure the pure IPP connection, like between CUPS and an IPP network printer, which you buy in the store. And therefore, this bridge is not passed through by any PPD file. CUPS currently generates PPD files as it is its internal mechanism to print jobs. Printer applications. Some printer applications use internally PPD files, exactly the ones which I have written, which use the lib papel retrofit, because they are retrofitting CUPS drivers. But these, also these printer applications, they speak only IPP to the outside world. They print as well the jobs from a phone as from CUPS. No PPD is going from my printer applications to CUPS or from CUPS to my printer applications. So we already have, when we use any printer application, independent of their retrofitting ones, which use my library, or whether they're native ones, which do not use this library, they're, they're, uh, we have a completely for the outside, not looking into each component, a completely PPD-less workflow. And one nice thing too with the printer applications is they work with the current cups, they work work with the next cups, and so we're we're kind of getting away from this. Point. You know, what are we going to do? We've uh, we've we've gotten rid of printer drivers and cups. How do we how do we possibly exist? Well, we've we've got this you know three or four year period here where we're getting all these printer applications based on the old stuff to support those older printers. And by the time we do get to the uh, PPD free uh, cups, um, you know, we'll have printer applications to replace anything that was a printer driver before. Mm -hmm. Right. So all the drivers are going to be put in printer applications. Are yeah. all of the printer applications going to be snap only? Yes. Or are they going to? Yes. We are very close before encapsulating all the drivers because I completed the library the lib papel retrofit. I already uh, tested it with two printer applications and uh, the, in the next printer, uh, the next uh, uh, conversions, which I will do will probably get much easier because mm -hmm. uh, I think now I have more or less feature complete. Perhaps a little feature the library right. will still get, but it's more or less feature complete already. Yeah. Okay. It, as 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 long as as Puppet supports it, if if Mike fixes um, the rest of my feature requests and bugs in Puppet, oh it gets more perfect. And are you calling so, him out on a yeah. live stream, man? <laughs> I I think you know. In answer to your question, I think the 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 point we you can get these printer applications on the Snap Store mm -hmm. or you know installed separately and it'll all all just work and then till's been doing some interesting stuff um in conjunction with their google summer of code projects on papal so that there's a way for the guis to be able to go query the snap store and say hey i'm looking for a driver for this epson printer which which uh do i need to use and then be able to automatically uh get it install it and then you can configure it to use use it for your printer. So I think uh, we're going to have a much more flexible way of doing that than before with the old PPD files and everything that you would have to install locally and in which your distro had to compile for you. Yes. <laughs> and well, or, or the manufacturer had to compile it for 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 10 or more distros and therefore the manufacturer did not make drivers. Now the manufacturer takes okay, no no the uh, Manufacturer takes Mike's puppet and makes a driver and shoots it into the to the Snap Store, and then all their customers print in a Snap. 
Yeah. Well, I, yeah, that, that's great. I can't believe that most of our time has flown by with such mm -hmm. exciting printer There's talk. One I would like. Thing I want to still say we have a little Easter egg in Impish because oh. I told you, Heather, and in the team meetings that I have created an algorithm which converts standard IPP options into the PPDs options automatically for any PPD. And so if you print with standard IPP options, like from a phone, the correct PPD options for print quality, black and white and color and content optimization are selected. And so you get always the best print out. I have done a distro patch on cups porting this feature. So if you print to impish cups with standard IPP options, like from a phone onto a shared queue, the, the, the Impish Cups does the same thing. So it is now available for testing in Impish. And yes. I will put it also up upstream so that PPDs until Cups 3.0 comes out will die a nice death. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, that's great. Like, I, I, I hope it's no problem for you when I do this upload soon. It's in in lip. It will be in lip cups in the ppdcache.c file. Okay, yeah, and we can provide like the um, the commands and stuff in the discourse post if, if folks want to go and test this in Impish too. Yes, yes. <clears throat> what were, like um, to do a write up. Yeah, definitely. Um, yes, Monica, yes. what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say we're going to send it to live on a nice farm in the country. Right, right, with all those childhood pets. Yes. Um, <laughs> what, uh... So um, before we kind of wrap up, wrap it up with the, the printing discussion, I wanted to go to some questions that mm -hmm. the community has. So one question was submitted earlier today <clears throat> in the Ubuntu Hideout um, Discord, and it was from Daniel. Um, and this can be really for either of you. Uh, it has been said that the community that supports CUPS is an extremely small set of people, and that a considerable amount of domain specific knowledge resides within them. By them, I mean you two <laughs> and a few <laughs> others. How true is this, and what measures have been or can be taken to, you know, uh, de risk the future of CUPS and Linux printing? The software well, being open source is sometimes not enough. We need to make the domain specific knowledge accessible as well. So I have to say one of the things when I uh, uh, forked Apple Cups to bring it back into open printing um, and a, a lot of uh, teeth gnashing at that because I didn't want to get myself back into the czar of printing mode or anything like that. <laughs> uh, we had a, a uh, an interesting email conversation uh, between myself and Till and, and uh, all of the various Linux distributions that are doing their own maintenance of cups. And I basically said to them, I was like, I'll, I'll fork this and we'll start getting all these, these changes rolling, but I don't want to be the guy. Um, everybody <laughs> else has to pick up the slack. <laughs> yeah. And, and, uh, and, Largely, like I, I, I do a lot of the triage right now on, on the open printing cups uh, repository, but there's been a lot of, of changes coming in from other people as well. And um, I, I fully recognize both the, the, uh, uh, the, the need to make sure that, that uh, open printing survives if, if Till and I were to get both get hit by buses. Um, but at the same time, uh, I think uh, this time is a little different because uh, when I de first developed Cups, I was kind of in my own little world, in my own little company, and and um, you know certainly uh, worked with people outside of, of of my my company. But it was it was our baby, and right. and uh, when when I did the fork, I, I was very specific. This this isn't my baby anymore. You, you all have been doing so much with cups yes. for so many From years. Now on, I have adopted. You, you can, you can pick baby. up the slack. Um, so, <laughs> so I think there's, there's a certain amount of, of uh, domain specific knowledge that certainly, you know, between uh, Till and I, but I, I think a lot of the other uh, people who are involved um, are, 
are are very quickly getting to the point where they you know i'm already getting you know people will uh, submit pull requests and and somebody else will jump on it right away oh that doesn't that's not that's not uh you know conforming with our coding uh standards or or no we don't want to do it this way we want to do it that way and and it's nice to see because that would have been the first thing i would have said is like okay no we don't really want to do it this way because um so it's not just me now that's 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 yeah. making those calls so uh mm. certainly right now if something was to happen it, it would be a setback but i think uh in the long term my goal for sure is to make sure that i'm not sitting up late at night trying to get everybody else's changes where it's been i i'm not linus i i don't want to be the czar of printing or or you know the the benevolent benevolent uh, dictator i i want to solve interesting problems and so this is this is one i feel we've already solved mostly and we just you know keep improving and right. and uh you know let somebody else you know uh do yeah. some work mm -hmm. so, and i think uh, till has done a great I'm job with like the google summer dictator. of code yes yes and yeah i've been very pleased long. with the, the uh, gsoc uh uh, students. Yeah. They've all done really good work. COVID got vaccinated, so. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and Till's doing a great job, like, just promoting t printing at Plumbers and Open Printing Summit and just, but like. we really need a community. You know that one man not, cannot build an airport. We need people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So that's another thing is we can post in the discourse about um, if people are interested and want to get involved in that community, where can they find you guys? And we'll definitely yeah. post links yeah. to that. My um, colleague Avik Bazu from Lexmark does a great job by recruiting in India the university students with a nice uh, three-step uh, selection uh, uh, procedure for the Google mm -hmm. Summer of Code and several students did. Our, our current website is created by, by former Google Summer of Code students, not the text content of the news uh, of the monthly sure. news. Mm -hmm. Mike, please announce also your releases on the news and events, mm -hmm. part, yeah. as yeah. I do with uh, CAPS filters. Mm -hmm. And um. So this works very well, but we need more sources. We cannot only live from the Indian universities. Right. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Especially so we GUI is involved. our problem. We need people who make GUI tools mm. for setting mm. up printers, for finding printer applications. Right. And also do the do patches for the GUI projects test and improve the GTK file bugs. and Libre, mm -hmm. yeah. Libre Seriously. Office dialogues, nag these people, provide yeah. patches so that the all the changes in architecture that they will quickly be quickly get overtaken because they are lagging uh, the the GUI projects are lagging really a lot behind Mike's and my architecture changes and API changes okay. and so on. Yeah. Well, I think I think we have time for maybe one more question before we can kind of go to the news Monica has. Um, and this question came from uh, a YouTube uh, the YouTube chat from Raphael. Uh, is is Papple going to replace cups? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I've been asked that question a few times, and and uh, it's kind of orthogonal. Like Cups is 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 the the library there uh, for doing IPP and HTTP, um, but it's also the the server. And and Papple does the server part, um, but in a very um, like application ish way. I don't know any other way to put it. And it's great for printer applications, and actually, it's being used in printer firmware too, which is really mm. cool. But um, by itself, it's not enough functionality to replace what we would normally have uh, for Cups D or in the in the new Cups 3.0 architecture, the local server and the sharing server. Um, and that may change, and there's certainly going to be more stuff that's going to be added to to Papple over time. Uh, but I think. Ultimately, uh, 
Papal is intended as a library, as a resource, and and anything that we do for cups is going to be bigger than that. You know, it's a whole printing system. And, you know, I, I kind of feel that at, at some point we're going to end up having to split up cups a bit so that the library portion is one project and then these the spoolers are a different project and desktop integration is a different uh, project. Mm -hmm. um, just to kind of match up where things are because right. from when I started, it was one monolithic thing and even I had right. GhostScript embedded in it. You know, it was like, it was yes, that thing. Yes. And then I, you know, I've separated this, uh, these, uh, these, uh, the Amazian twins in 2007 and made the grand, grand unified uh, uh, ghost script, which is the ghost script of today in 2007, moving everything from Mike over into the upstream ghost script to get yeah, rid of have several ghost scripts. Yeah, and I think that makes a lot of sense. Like as the project grows and you know adapts to its ever changing surroundings, that it you know it should adapt as well. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, I I think it's been a great talk uh, having you guys uh, here today to tell us about printing, and I hope everybody has learned about printing and is a little bit more excited about printing. I know I am now that I it's not such a, a dark art. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so with that, I'd kind of like to pass it over to Monica and say, Monica, what kind of surprise do you have us have for us today? Well, I don't know how much of a surprise it is because we have been advertising this a lot. But today is the announcement of the Impishendry Desktop Wallpaper Competition. The voting closed, well, either very late last night for the um, Americas or early this morning for the, our um, MIA friends. Much more reasonable hour for people in APAC. We had over 200 submissions. Wow. We it was incredible. It was so hard. And I hope everybody here, well, Michael, it's okay if you didn't know about this until <laughs> if you maybe didn't, but Heather, I really <laughs> hope you voted. It was really hard. It was really hard. I kept on having to kind of pull ones out and going, which mm -hmm. one do I love more? I don't know. But it was incredibly exciting. And we have the top two finishers. While the default wallpaper will still be kind of the standard that we're used to, and that and that will be coming out in the coming weeks, um, these will be uh, the top two will be included in the official image. So when you go in to pick from the wallpapers there, those two will be there. But we did want to show off our top 10. Uh, and it really, it's worth it if you haven't gone through to see all of them because the creativity there was mm -hmm. incredible. And I just want to thank anybody listening who submitted to the competition. We are so grateful for you. You just astounded us with what you made. And even if you submitted something and it didn't get picked, I'm sure there's going to be people going to that post to find wallpapers there. And so we just want to ask you to keep your creativity, just nurture it, grow it, and look for the next competition for whatever the code name for 2204 is going to be. So without further ado, let me uh, figure out how to share my screen and which tab I'm going to share. Let's see, Chrome tab. Winners of the 21 cent drum roll. There we go. <laughs> okay, that should be showing. So our t these are our winners. And if I mispronounce anybody's handle, I am so sorry. So these are our top two by KCPRU, which, and I do love that, that it just makes you think of fall, which is coming mm. to those of us, and it has that beautiful curve, so that is just beautiful. And then this one here by, by Paul Loop, Paul, um, I hope that's how I sit that and I think these are just absolutely lovely and so these two will be in the official image for um, the final image for Impish Injury 
But like I said, we couldn't limit ourselves to two. So we do want to show off our top 10. And we have the next two. This first one here, which uh, is by Time Witch, which is just absolutely gorgeous. And then, oh, you can also see the live chat. Good to know that they are on duty there, but we don't want to see that in the wind. Indo, and then the second one by G Zero B, which again has that l that lovely color gradient that we all love. Looks I am, like it was done in Blender. <laughs> yes, a lot of these were done in Blender. Yeah. Um, this one specifically was done in Blender, so nice. uh, by Blendufo <laughs> One, and I am glad that this has just this has such. This is giving me such Eowyn Ehrman vibes. Um, and it was really nice to see one of the injury specific ones that made it. And then this next one is by Johannes. And again, the photo we have such f talented photographers in our community. It is stunning. And then the next two, we have this photo by KCPRU. And so we had a few people who got two, who were really talented, submitted multiple things, and they both got in. And the second one is by Haiku, who is not only are you an amazing photographer, you to climb to wherever you got to to take the picture of the <laughs> mountain. I am really impressed. Uh, and then here we have our last two. And again, we've got this, um, we've got this really kind of, I really like the energy of the one with the Ubuntu logo by Ilya SDS. And then we have the other one by G Zero B that I think looks like it is a blender creation with that gorgeous Yaru gr gradient there. So we will have, hopefully, um, my counterpart is putting all the um, those links in the chat. Yes, thank you, Reese. And this was amazing. We were so happy. These were really hard choices. And we are hoping to kind of fine tune things like how things will be submitted, how we'll be voting on it to kind of tweak that for the next one. But thank you so much. And we are uh, so happy. And uh, Till, it looks like Ken is calling you out for the next competition. Oh, and what, what? Uh, oh, Ken, says you, Ken says you should submit some of your photographs for the next <laughs> wallpaper competition. Oh, yeah. We do have some Our photographers people, on the desktop team. People look like feeling, feeling in Vienna when they are sitting at their desktop. Mm hmm yeah, so thank you everyone and in a few months, uh, once we're into the next re Elise cycle, I'm sure we're going to be announcing the competition for whatever J code name we're going to have. But mm -hmm. Mike's tweet is also photography. So Mike, oh, well, you should so admit. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. We are lo looking forward to it. It could be like a mosaic of a whole bunch of like photographs that together look like a printer <laughs> or just ooh, just something with like a, a, a mosaic of cups mm. <laughs> <laughs> any anything that, that it, there's lots of room for creativity there i can't wait to see what is submitted for for the next cycle that should be a lot but monica do you know when we should get like the official impish um wallpaper um, that usually comes up anywhere in like the, I'm trying to think of when it came out for her suit. And I think it was within the last two weeks. Yeah. So there's always, okay. the, there's always the date that we hope to have it. And then there's when, we, yeah. when we right. have it. So, right, right. Okay. Okay. Well, yep. so everybody can look forward to, to mm -hmm. that being posted. I'm sure OMG Ubuntu will be like right out there. <laughs> as soon oh, as, yes. As soon as we've got it. So. Um, thank you, everyone, again, so much for coming to this month's Indaba, and I hope to see you all uh, next time, which is the last Friday of the month, which is mm -hmm. uh, September 24th. Yeah, Excellent. so 
Um, thanks again, Mike Till, for for joining us. Thanks everybody for you know putting your questions in the chat and participating. And we hope to see you all next time. All right. What a pleasure. Okay. <laughs>